Well, it because I went out of order on accident and I didn't feel like switching them. Um, so we just rolled with the punches. All right, 5.9D, complex factors and solutions. This is where it all comes together. Um, so what are we doing here? Uh, we are, if we have the complex, the expression AX squared plus C, in order to find the factors, we're gonna check that both terms are perfect squares, okay? And if not, then we're gonna divide both terms by A and see if it helps us um, through simplifying, if possible. Um, we're gonna rewrite. And the reason why we rewrite is because we use what we learn about factoring. If I'm in the form of X squared minus C squared, I can factor down to X minus C times X plus C. Then we're gonna take the square root of both terms. And then we write them as factors. And if you're unsure, you should always check your answer by multiplying, AKA FOIL. Okay, let's, oh. All right, so um, we are in the form of two X squared plus eight. Are two and eight perfect squares? They're perfect squares? No, so because they're not perfect squares, then we're gonna start off with, uh, we're going to divide by our A. So step one, we're dividing by A. And if I'm dividing each one by two, that's gonna leave me with two X squared plus four. What are your questions in step one? No questions? Because two and eight, are they perfect squares? No, so they won't allow us to use that rule. Mm -hmm. That's why I said all comes together. All right. Um, step two is we're going to rewrite it as difference of two squares. So we're going to rewrite it as a difference of two squares. So it's going to become two X squared minus negative four. And the reason why we do that is so that we can factor by taking the square root. So we can take the square root of each term now. So step three is to take the square root of each term, dots difference of two squares. So I'm gonna take the square root of each term and I'm gonna write my factors. My GCF is still there. What is the square root of X squared? X. What is the square root of negative four? Two what? Two I. If there's a negative underneath the square root, you have to include the I. The negative from last Thursday? Or two Thursdays ago at this point? Okay. And when we take the square root of something, it produces a positive and a negative. So my other factor is X plus two I. And this would be my factored answer. If I was not sure, then I will use FOIL and distribution to recheck. Question. Okay. Let's look at number two. So number two, looking at my A and my C, are they perfect squares? Nine's not perfect. Is one perfect? I'm pretty sure one times one is one, y'all. Uh, so they are perfect. So step one, we're good to go. Step two, I'm going to rewrite them as difference of two squares. So that gives me nine X squared minus negative one. And now that it's difference of two squares, I now can take the square root of each term. After taking the square root of each term, that gives me three X, one what? One I. And for every negative, there is a positive. 
And that would be my. And if I don't trust what I have, then I'm going to use what? Foil. Okay. What are your questions about those four steps? Questions, comments, concerns. Remember, so remember taking the square root of a negative, you're gonna have a an i, and you're gonna have a positive and a negative version of this of the root. All right. So on your um, part three of your classwork for this section, you have five problems, meant four problems, and um, you'll be able to actually come back and check them. So within the notes on Canvas, you can come back and check your answers to make sure you did it correct. Because you still got to do the work. Yes. I told you guys to move. Hmm? Um, so last part of D, um, decide if you, we're going to solve full on. So finally solving a full problem. So we've been learning little bitty skills to get here. Uh, first, you decide if you want to use the quadratic formula or if you want to um, complete the square. Most of the times, I will encourage you to use quadratic formula, less errors, less possibility. That's your x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of 4 b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We didn't finish. All right, so here we go. Completing the square example. So this is our completing the square example. So if you remember the steps for completing the square, step one is to move your C. So to move your C term. So what is our C term here? Five, so how do I move five? Subtract it. So I'm left with X squared plus two X plus nothing now equals negative five. Good? And then step two is we're gonna find what we called our magic number. And your magic number is your B term divided by two squared. So my B is two. So what is two divided by two squared? One. And now I'm gonna add that to both sides. So I add the magic number. Add a little bit of magic to it. And that gives me x squared plus 2x plus 1. And what I do to one side of an equal sign, I have to do to the other side. Step four is to factor. Mm -hmm. So step four is to factor. What multiplies to give me one, but adds to give me two? One times one. So that's how we end up with X plus one squared. And what is negative five plus one? Four. Negative four. Your last and final step is to solve for X. What do I need to do to solve for X? Square root. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That gives me x plus 1 equals plus or minus negative 2i. What is left for me to do to get x by itself? Subtract 1. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So we now know that x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2i. because you took the square root of a negative. Mm -hmm. When you take the square root of a negative, it produces an I. So that means that this graph would be floating and not touching the X axis. Okay. All right. It's about to ring. It's about to ring. All right, last piece, quadratic formula. 
Again, quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So with the quadratic formula, step one is to identify your variables. My variables are a is a negative four, b is six, and c is negative three. Step two is to plug the bad boys in. So I have negative six plus or minus the square root of six squared minus four times negative four times negative three divided by two times negative four. Are there any questions about where everything was plugged in at? And then we just, step three is you just simplify. You start cleaning all of this up. So you keep going. And now I'm gonna, I have negative six plus or minus, and I'm gonna do my discriminant, which is 36 minus 48 over negative eight. Mm -hmm. Because it's two times your A and my A is, mm -hmm. and we have negative six plus or minus the square root of negative eight divided by negative eight, which equals negative six plus or minus two I square root of two, all over negative eight. Step four is to simplify. If I can divide, if there's a GCF between all of my outside coefficients, then I use it. What is the GCF between my coefficients? Mm -hmm. Two. So my answer is X equals negative three plus or minus I square root of two over negative four. So you have the choice to either do completing the square or the quadratic formula. That's the formula. So you have four of them to do, which one you, however you choose to do it is up to you. I encourage quadratic formula, less error. Um, and then you can come back and check your answers. They are part of the notes, okay? All right.